has done so much for me my God has done so much for me it would take a million years it would take a million years to say all God's done for me My God has done so much for me. My God has done so much for me. It'll take a million years. My God done so much for me you are my God my holy God and I'm so thankful I'm so thankful are the love of my life you are my world my days and nights you are my God and I'm so thankful I'm so thankful Father, I thank you for the privilege of ministry, salvation, of influence, of experience. I thank you for I thank you for the 120 that I ask you for that have the same passion to help people as I do. Father, there's an obsession we cannot explain, a compassion that's uncontrollable indescribable, and certainly not containable. I thank you, Father. And I've called this little school of wisdom together as permitted preachers, pastors, evangelists, prophets, teachers, youth pastors, missionaries, and Father, at 76 years old, 56 years of traveling around the world nonstop, I thank you for every open door, opportunity, idea. I thank you for restorations, reconciliations, restorations, inspirations. I thank you for revelations. Everything you've given to me has astounded me. I have nothing you have not given to me. I don't have anything you have not given to me. And y'all, you, you gave it through people. Father, if we don't get along with people, we'll never get anything from God. Because everything you go to give, you try to pick out somebody that needs the pleasure of sowing, and you inspire them to sow. And so you kind of solve a lot of problems with one thing. Father, I want to talk about how to write books, the necessity of it, the importance of it the benefit of it, the value of it, the cost of it. And as I talk about how to write a book, there's not been one person in 76 years of my life that's talked to me about writing a book. Not one. Not one. I write because I care. I write because I'm concerned. I write because I'm persuaded. I write because it heals. Thank you, Father. You loved the world so much you gave your son, then you took him back after 33 years, but you left your book. You sent your son, but you left your book. 
Help me. Help me now. Help me now to inspire. Help me, Lord, to inspire some preacher of the gospel, somebody. To write their books. Amen. Amen. The turning point of my life for book writing was when I came back from Singapore and I had a bad experience, very bad experience. I won't go into detail. That's where my beer started. And I was so down for two weeks, I never shaved my beard and never came back to shave it. Uh, but that's where I grew my beer. I was in California. I was 35. I was doing some TV. And when I came back from my trip to Singapore, there was about a thousand letters just under, if I recall, about 995, something like it. Just under a thousand letters, and they were the only. And letters are real impactful to me. They're impactful. I consider when somebody writes a letter that they've, uh, it's a big investment somebody writes, big investment. When I was nine years old, eight, nine, maybe no, maybe 11, I wrote notes to my father and he wrote me back. So writing's big to my heart. But I never saw myself as a writer ever in my life, still don't. But I'm beginning to get there now. So I begin to open the letters. I study everything. I'm attentive to everything. There's almost nothing I don't look at long and penetrate, whether it's a person, even a dog. I'm very attentive my nature, very attentive. I study countenance. I document reactions. I'm like, I'm not photogenic, but I just remember a lot and look a lot. I started reading the letters. I'd read about four or five letters and I could not believe it. I began to cry and cry. And I said, there's no way I can answer this. But the letter, one lady, Husband left her, several children, things like that. Lost their job, people lost their job. Some in the hospital for days, just got out of the hospital. Homosexuals wrote me. Didn't know how to get free from their desire for you know similar sex, same sex. Drunkards couldn't shake. Preachers who want to quit the ministry. I looked. I said, I've got to put a, I got to put a book together. Only a book will answer these people. That's why you write books. It's an answer. A book is a solution. It's a key. It's a door. A book is a palace. You walk in somebody's world and you study their environment. Oh, a book is magical. It's so magical that God told us to write 46 times in the 1189 chapters of the Bible. Frankly, it's almost a sin not to write. That's why I wanted to share this with you to give you some steps because you can want to do something not know how to how to get there. I wrote the book by going through my past newsletters to partners and tearing out my articles. And this will be chat. This will be number one. This will be number two. Ten lies about money. How to be an up person in a down world. Five steps out of depression. Articles that I had written, I tore them out and made them chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. There's no necessity for a 
for a book to have continuity. The book is you. Make it what you want to. If you want five pictures and two words, it can. That's you. Your book is a picture of what you feel. Nobody can tell you about a book, what it's supposed to be like. No, it's your experience. I'm not going to change who I am so somebody will like me. If they're smart, they will like me in my authenticity, the way I am. I don't sit there and beg a bird to bark. I don't look at an elephant and say, why can't you just, why can't you, you fly? What's wrong with you? I don't look at an elephant and say, why can't you fly? Look at the canary. What's wrong with you, you fat thing? Why you got that big, long thing nose? The bird don't, what's wrong with you? Because the elephant's an elephant. A bird's a bird. A dog's a dog. A skunk's a skunk. Treasure, treasure authenticity. Treasure it. I don't look at the box, the glass. Why didn't they, why didn't they write some scriptures here on the, well, that's Chick-fil-A. They're supposed to be Christians. Why didn't they put some scriptures? Do who you are, be who you are, and the authenticity will attract those who value the difference in you. That's the whole point. Won't somebody, the elephant could say, well, if you need a dog, I'd suggest you go buy one. <laughs> Your book is who you are, what you feel, and you'll change. You'll change. You'll love to eat. 30 minutes later, you'll say, I will never eat here again. I don't like that. You're constantly changing. Why? Well, that's the whole purpose of knowledge is to become something different, more. God wouldn't give you a brain if you were complete at three days old. Stay here with me. Stay here with me. Please stay here with me. Stay here with me. It's powerful. I wrote my book, sent it to my five favorite heroes in the ministry, my five favorite heroes in the ministry. Three ignored me, never wrote me back, and I'd preach for them. They were all well-known, all famous. Um, Mac Evans, Joppa, Missouri, he wrote me back about five sentences. It was good. Another man we all know, famous, wrote me back a two-page tearing me to shreds pieces, how that I was complete. Now, all through the book is there's a chapter there on depression. There's a, there's a book there on, on reading the Bible. And he, had, he got my 10 lies many people believe about money, and he tore me into shreds. And I couldn't talk for about, oh, about two weeks, if I recall, a week or two. I couldn't talk. I was devastated that my hero whose opinion meant so much to me. He tore me to pieces. Said I had twisted the word of God, perverted scripture. <laughs> he was the number one hero in my early ministry. Number one hero. I printed the book. Went around the world. And that book was the connection to the greatest humans of my lifetime. Three of the greatest humans of my lifetime is Matthew Ashimolowo, Bishop David Oyedipo, Lagos, Nigeria, Pastor David Ebiomi in Port Harcourt. A fourth is um, Pastor Bioden Fadayimbo in Abuja, Nigeria. Those four men have supported my ministry more than any other 
50 preachers combined other than Oral Roberts. Now watch this. I wrote that book, Tears, to be an answer to people's problems because I felt like I had some answers. Not, a, not all answers, but I have some. I'm in London, England. I look up, there's a man comes down the aisle. Only 120 people or so, 25 or something. He looked at me and he had it in his hand. Welcome to a winner's world. He had my book. He said, I want to meet you. My name is Matthew Ashimolowo. I didn't know he had a church of 10,000. I didn't know he was one of the greatest preachers on the face of the earth. I didn't know anything about him. 125 people in that little church in London, England, they wanted me to come preach, so I did. He walks in holding my book. He said, you're the first man I've ever met that thinks like I do. He said, I bought your book in a used bookstore. And I read it all the way eight hours. From New York, I think it was, all the way back to London. I have a church here. Would you come preach for me? A book creates relationship. A book stops doubts, fears, births hope. A book is the answer place of the earth. A book is the door to your pleasure world. Victory world, overcoming world. A book is so important, God wrote one. A book is so important, God wrote one. Through people. First five books of the Bible called Pentateuch by Moses, etc., etc., etc. I went and preached for Bishop Matthew Ashimolo. He told everybody holding up the book, Welcome to a Winner's World. I think later I called it Wisdom for Winning because of my TV program was called Wisdom for Winning. And he held it up to thousands of people, 16 years in a row that I spoke at his conferences. One day he says, there's a man, a preacher from Lagos that flew here and he wants to meet you face to face. Would you go to the hotel to meet him? I didn't know anything about the man. He said he pastors in Lagos. That's what he said. He pastors in Lagos. You wrote a book called Dream Seeds. I said, I sure did. Took me a year to write that book. One year. And he said, he said it really changed his ministry. I want to show you the power of a book. Because you've got several inside of you. And I'm going to unlock that book. And you're going to heal people through your book, because you can't stay everywhere. Your book stays where you can't stay. Your book goes where you can't go. Your book creates friendships that's never met you. Your book is your seed. People are your harvest. You've lived a book, you just hadn't written it. You've lived a book, you just had pal hadn't published because you don't know how. But stay with me. Stay with me. This matters. This is our school of ministry today. Session 712B. Listen to me carefully. Please, please, please. I walked in the hotel room. Here's this man with the most phenomenal smile. 
shaded eyes about half shut. And he smiled at me. And he had his book, my book, Dream Seeds, in his hand like this. He smiled. And he grabbed me and he held me. And he held me. And he held me. His name was Bishop David O. Ye Depo. O. Y. E. D. E. P. O. He shook his head, stroked his book. Would you please come preach in my church? Oh, sure. When? It's the yeses of life that decide all your successes. It's the yes. It's the yes moments. It's the yes moments that create heaven on earth. I got there. I could not believe his church. This is from a little book. This is one. This is from a book I wrote. To tell you stories about that book, Dream Seeds. Took me one year to write. Tears, I could tell you stuff. I walked in his church, a huge platform, the biggest platform I'd ever seen in my life. I've spoken for Donald Trump, all of them. Not no platform like this one. And it was divided into three legs, three sections. Each section having 17,000 uh, seated about 52, 53, 51,000 people. Each section, 17,000. And I stood there and looked around. My Lord, my Lord, I'm not believing this. I brought my dad with me. I could say many things. Many things. A magnificent human. He had a protege named David also. E.B. Omi. E.B. Omi. In Port Harcourt, Nigeria. Watch this. Bishop Matthew says, calls me on a Saturday and says, I have a friend in Port Harcourt who's wanted you for years to preach for him. He's read some of the things you write. Would you go preach for him tomorrow? I said, oh, I, I, I'm going to be flying out in six hours, Brother Matthew. I've got my, I'm looking at my luggage, can't wait to get home. I was in Abuja. He was in London, England. He said, well, he's a man worth knowing. I love that phrase. He's a man worth knowing. He's a man worth knowing. I'll come back and tell you an incredible story that happened today. When he said he's a man worth knowing. I want to say this to every preacher. Man or woman, are you a man worth knowing and why? Are you a woman worth knowing and why? And if you're worth knowing and somebody doesn't reach for you, somebody doesn't pursue you, somebody doesn't enjoy you, what does that tell you? It tells you they're not worth knowing. There's no mystery to that. There's no mystery to that. The first sign of greatness is the pursuit of greatness. That's from Zacchaeus' handbook. Wow. 
I said, let me tell him I'll come. It was Saturday after that. Tell him I'll come. I'll get a plane tomorrow. Fly over there. It's not far. But there were no planes. There were no planes. What's the difference in men? The price they'll pay to show their favor. That's the major difference in men. It's the price they'll pay to get close to you. That's why Zacchaeus is up in the tree. That's why the top of the roof is split open and five men or so lowered their friend down on a stretcher. I had to charter a plane. Seemed like it was $9,000, seemed like. I had some of my staff, a couple of preachers. When I got there, the city would not let me spend the night in the city. They said I had to return to Lagos, Nigeria on my chartered plane, so I did. There was 35,000 people there. 35,000. I can't tell you in words what that man has meant to my life. David, he be on me. I don't have the time to tell you who he really is. In fact, me and Billy Graham's grandson was sitting one night together there in the church. And I told Billy Graham's grandson I said, this man is one of the best experiences you'll ever have in your life. Billy Graham had sent his grandson just to see what this man was building. It's 150,000 seat auditorium for 150,000 in his church. And I was part of that. How did I get to meet these men? I still remember Pastor Beoden Parayimbo, with 8,000 people crammed in his auditorium and thousands were watching through the website, etc. And he held up my book, Dream Seeds. And he said to the people, look around at all the people you see. He said, everything in my ministry is because of this book. He said, everything you see. It's because of this book I read. I was back in Lagos, and I walked in a huge building called the Protege Building. 3,000 preachers there. And Bishop David Oyedipo was holding up my book, Dream Seeds, and told the 3,000 preachers, he said, this is the book that changed my life. It's not how many read your book, it's who reads your book. Two. One who is worth a billion. Don't care, people. One. Don't ever get your mind on crowds. The purpose of the crowd is to find the one. You search through the crowd to find the Elisha who says, I want what's inside of you. Departures are glorious, glorious gifts from God. Departure of the wrong people, glorious gifts from God. One book. One book. What's the steps? Go to a Barnes and Noble, or look at mine, but go to Barnes and Noble and find a book you like to touch. Find a book you like to hold. Find a book you like to stroke. This is my favorite hardback that I've written. 
my favorite one is the perfect size. It's not too thick. It's not too little. It's the perfect size. It's called The Wisdom Notes of Mike Murdoch. It's my 150 greatest thoughts I ever had in my lifetime. And they're all numbered. Watch this. Go to bookstore. Take pictures. I took pictures of over 900 covers I like. I took pictures in Barnes & Noble of over 900 covers I love to look at. One had a number. One had a certain color. One had a certain kind. In the words of the number one motivator on the earth today, Tony Robbins, that has advised many presidents, he said this, success leaves clues. Success leaves clues. I read every word Warren Buffett ever said. I read every word Bill Gates ever said. The richest man on the earth is worth 300 million. He's been going through a scenario with Twitter. His name's Elon Musk. And Elon said this. They asked him, how in the world did you get where you could send missiles into space? He said, I read a book. 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 Jesus didn't try to reach the world. He died for the world. But he reached 12. Then the 12 reached the 120. Then the 120 caused the exponential growth of Jesus on the earth. Find a book you love to hold and touch. Find the kind of prints you love to read. The font. Find what you like to look at. Because once you write a book, you'll never be the same. You'll never go back. Never go back. What should I write about? No, what you, should, you talk your book. Talk your book. Don't sit there unless emotionally you need the reassurance. That's okay. Lester Sumrall wrote all his books out longhand on uh, legal pads, etc. Talk. I would sit down with somebody who unleashes a desire to talk. Do you love to talk about around everybody? Of course not. There's people you don't want to say a word to. There's people I've had around me, I couldn't wait till they left. Left, I had to, you know, and it's better to meet people in places where you can leave easily because sometimes you can't get people to leave. And you'll always want a back door. You always need an exit in every environment. Always, always. If I were you, I would, anyway, that's another world. Talk about preachers now. When you schedule appointments, four o'clock to five, I'll meet with you. Always schedule the conclusion. Don't ever say I'll meet you at two o'clock. They may stay there till six and then I'll show up till four. Treasure your time so carefully in the ministry. Someone says, I need to meet with you, Pastor. Okay, it'll be Thursday afternoon at 4.15. Oh, I, I don't know if I can meet it. Well, if they want to meet with you, they can meet with you at that time. Now, as a pastor, you're flexible, adaptable, but you'll pay for it in the long run, dearly. Remember, the burden of adaptation is on the pursuer. The burden of adaptation is on the pursuer. Zacchaeus had to climb the tree to get Jesus to come to his house. By the way, those who don't respect your time will never follow your advice. If you say, I'll meet you at 4 o'clock to 5, and they show up at 4.45, they didn't care about your time, your words won't mean anything. Never schedule the second meeting.
If you don't know how to invest time for a profit, emotional profit, relationship, if you don't know how to schedule your time, you never will succeed on the earth. It's you. Time is a gift currency. It's a divine currency. God gave you to trade for experiences and to trade for knowledge and to trade for people. It's relationships. Talk about what you're thinking about. Talk about what you're thinking about. Tape everything you ever teach, everything you ever preach. I tape everything I've ever taught to the staff. I never talk to my staff without taping it because there will be two or three sentences in that half hour, an hour. There will be two or three things that I never saw before until I started sowing my thoughts into them. You'll learn more through teaching than you'll ever learn through listening. Don't ever in my kitchen. I was thinking today as I had one of my ladies been with me many years, I called her in here today to teach three of my other staff something about websites and things. And I sat there and I thought, now there's the way to unlock greatness. Give them a position of teaching. Teaching makes you smarter than you could ever dream. You will only remember what you keep saying. You will only remember what you keep teaching. Every person watching me right now needs to teach something I'm saying today to somebody you care about. Because what you teach is magnified. Teaching is sowing and reaping. Teaching is sowing. I want to stop for a moment. It's 5.38. Nigeria is here. Prophet Joshua will be with me tomorrow. Joshua Holmes. Thank you, son. It's true. Jacques, Dr. May, Julie, Bishop McIntyre, Ellen, Donna, Susan Lord, Cindy Jones. Cindy Jones, you're one of the most articulate people I know in the world. Cindy, right. Right, right. By the way, Cindy, in your tweets, in your tweets, I think they're your tweets, be real sensitive about tone. Tone, tone creates enemies. The tone of attack vents. Many times I vented through things I said, but I created an unnecessary enemy. And enemies are generational. You'll never have one enemy. Every enemy has a bloodline. When you activate the bloodline against you, you create your own lifetime distractions. Ken Loring just reminded me. I'm still amazed the story over 25 years ago where a military soldier was going to shoot his superior, but he read your letter and stopped. Your letter saved two lives that day. End quote. Thank you, Ken. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Doreen, Marvelous Adams, Jackie Smith. I prayed with three. Oh, Sean Mandel, Henry, please, please, please. Keep writing. Amen. What do you write about? I'm going to give you some titles. Because a title is like a focus. You announce a title. All the information in you rushes to that title. If I said I'm going to preach on, preach on uh, teach on uh, seven things that uh, destroy a ministry marriage, instantly everything would rally in me that I've learned. God's built a great storage system in us for knowledge. It's remarkable. Those words of Jesus when he says, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will remind you of my conversations. And he does that. The Holy Spirit's probably the most magical, miraculous, I like the word magical, uh, magical 
inspiration on the earth. Nobody, nobody remembers your past like the Holy Spirit. Nobody. And he'll remind you of things you thought you had forgot about forever. Today some things came up and I'll tell you in a moment about them. Here's some, here's some things to write about. Three people that changed my life. Seven secrets I hope my children learn. What I would do differently if I could begin my life over again. The five turning points of my life. Three decisions that brought me great success and joy. I can think of titles every second of the day. And it's your title that rallies and summons the memories of yesterday. It's your title. If I could start my, my life over again, I would dictate constantly. You can get it transcribed anytime you want to, when you want to, if you want to. There are several methods. Dragon Anywhere has about a 90% accuracy. And when you, it's, a, it's an app, APP. It's an app called Dragon Anywhere. It's about 90% accurate, 95. One note is about 70% accurate. And one note's my number one uh, uh, system for collecting information, making it retrievable. Jimmy Swaggart was my inspiration for telling my life stories. And he says, tell people what you believe. Tell them about your childhood. Tell your experience. I was spending the night one night in his home in Baton Rouge. I spent a lot of hours with Jimmy. He's a majestic pulpiteer, genius. He's the one that unlocked my, made me go back to playing the piano. Because I, uh, I didn't, I would, I, that was not my thing. I wanted to preach. I was focused on preaching. And he said, people need to know who you are. Are you playing the piano? Are you doing this? Or, no, he said, people want to know who you are. He said, when you're a visiting evangelist and they come and they see you, they're, they're accustomed to their pastor. But they want to know, tell me about who you are. What do you believe, et cetera. Tell your story. Tell your story. Tell your story. Well, I don't know how I'm going to sell your book. Don't sweat it. One thing, don't count three, two, one backwards. Start with one, two, three. Progress. The law of sequence, we call it. The law of first, what comes first. Start thinking. Whoever if you're talking to your daughter, sit there. My father's book, Truth Out in the Open, it's out of this world book. Out of this world. You know where it started? In my secret place. Holding up a, a recorder, saying, Daddy, talk to me. Tell me about your life. Tell me about your experiences. Later, my sister got him involved and started taping him as well. And that's where is all his big, big book, Truth Out in the Open. My daddy didn't sit there and Write a book. He's, he, that, wasn't his, that wasn't his style. But he could talk. As long as you can talk, you can succeed. As long as you can speak, you can change your world. As long as you can speak, you can overcome fear. As long as you can talk, you can overcome sickness and disease. God gave you a mouth to conquer the earth that you're in. Started with a two-page book. Start with a ten-page book. There's a reason for the 16 pages and 32, and I won't go into that. Write your book for your family. Write your book for your family. There'll come a time you'll write differently. 
There'll come a time you realize your family's not reading anything you write, but it won't matter then. By then, it don't matter. But you're going to find the people who see your authenticity, treasure it, value it, pursue it, want it above all things. The day will come you'd rather talk to five investors than 5,000 listeners. Stop talking to the non-listeners. Stop investing your thoughts into the disinterested. It takes you a lifetime to learn that. Because subconsciously you think if I talk longer, they'll get more interested. No, talking is a spirit encounter. It's a spirit event. Let me stop for a moment. Apostle Sonia just wrote me. Thank you for every gift, every book you've written. My wisdom library is loaded with your books. Dwayne, exchange your time. Karen Renee, wisdom is everything. Christopher, quote, the yes moments. Christopher, I hope you read my book someday called The Yes Moments. The Yes Moments. It's a phenomenal revelation of when I said yes to Blake Farmer. I would play the piano. He was the president of Southwestern Assemblies of God. The yes moment when the CEO, the owner of Eric Airlines in Accra, Ghana, walked over to me and said, Dr. Murdoch, may I sit and talk to you? That was a yes moment. He's the one that gave me the secret of just stay, just stay and connect. The yes moment. When Tammy Faye Baker says, Richard Roberts needs to be singing your songs. There was a yes moment. I flew to California to meet Richard Roberts. And when he brought me back to Tulsa, he said, I really want you to meet Daddy. I thought, oh, Roberts. Ooh, oh, Roberts. Oh, I'd just gone through a failure in my marriage. I'd lost 13-year marriage. I didn't even want to preach anymore. He said, I want you to meet my daddy. And I walked on the platform of the big, huge maybe center, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Lewis Avenue. And suddenly, Oral Roberts grabs me, throws his arms around me, pulls me up close, and says, Mike, 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 I've waited a lifetime for somebody to write your... I've waited 25 years, that's what he said. I've waited 25 years for somebody to write the kind of songs you're writing. He's a healing Jesus. He's a healing Jesus. For you, those healing stripes were laid. He's a healing Jesus. Don't give up your dream. Don't turn loose of your vision. He said, I've waited 25 years for somebody to write the kind of songs you're writing. It was the yes moment. The yes moment with Matthew Ashimolowo to meet Pastor David E. B. O. Me. It was the yes moment. The yes moment. The yes moment. You want to read my book, The Yes Moments. July 13, 1994. Wednesday at 7 o'clock in the morning was my yes moment when I fell in love with the person of the Holy Spirit who appeared as a shadow in my room 
changed my life forever. I would trade every experience, every piece of knowledge, every discovery. I would exchange every discovery of my life. Lord, I discovered about the Holy Spirit. My yes moment. My yes moment. Bev John, Steve Bennett, Zachary Shaw, Brian and Nicole are here, Stephanie, Shock, I'm glad you're here. Write your book. You saw a lot changed my mind about things. So, write another book. Write a new book. Write what you believe. Write what you feel. There's 25 reasons I write books. Some of them are the following. Ready? To give praise to a teaching God who mentored me through the storms of life. To give cautions to the unprotected inexperienced, and unsuspecting. There's 25 reasons I write books. I don't care if they sell. I give my books away. I've given millions away. 23 million have been printed plus. Why? My book is my encounter with God, my experience with people. Tell me, tell me again, tell me how it will end. I need your joy, I need your joy. Tell me how it's going to end. Tell me what God has done for you. Tell me what you've been through. I want to know your story. I want to know your life. Tell me. I could write that. Tell me your story. Tell me your story. Don't write for the world. Write for your world. Write for the people you care about. Write for the people you love. The people who love you. The people who love you can read one paragraph and it saves them a thousand days of pain. Books stop pain. Books stop pain. Books unlock hope. Everything the Bible can do. Because your book is God's experience with you. Father, I thank you for these moments I've had. And Lord, you're stirring me about this School of Ministry, and I thank you. And I ask you for 120 people who want to be mightily, mightily used to bring healing to people. Lord, 8.46 billion people on the earth. 8.46 billion. We're not called to everybody. We're called to somebody. And there's somebody waiting for us. Somebody's waiting for you. Somebody's somebody's waiting for you. Your voice will bring hope. Your voice will bring 
faith somebody's waiting for you somebody's waiting for you somebody's waiting for you oh I love that song somebody's waiting for you somebody's waiting for your words somebody's waiting for your thoughts Somebody is waiting for someone exactly like you. Somebody's waiting for you. Somebody's waiting for you. Somebody's Wants to know how you made it through. Your voice can make the difference. All the difference in the world. Somebody's. Waiting for you. Not a bad song, is it? Not a bad song. Somebody's waiting for you. Lee Hudson, thank you. Cindy Jones. Enoch is here. Jerry Jones, Ohio. Jude, Elizabeth. Prophet Joshua. Julie. Thank you, Julie, for those words. Thank you. Tammy Markham. Yay, Tammy. Tammy, I never got to that phone call. It's been four years or so. Amen. I'll show you how to plant seeds into our ministry if you would like. And we'll put, you, put it on the screen. And I want to say thank you with all my heart. Thank you with all my heart for sowing into the kingdom of God, loving the kingdom. I had some radical experiences sowing seeds in God's work. Twelve. Twelve levels of sowing changed my world forever. While we're showing you how to sow, I want to say this. That uh, nobody's more interested in your money than God. He's the only one that's documented what he'll do when you obey his principles. Deuteronomy 28, 112th chapter of Psalm. 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. I could go on and on. And I want to say this. Expect a harvest. Name your harvest. The smartest man I ever knew was Oral Roberts. The smartest man I ever knew about success laws was Oral Roberts. Spent a lot of time with him. And one day while he was driving me through Tulsa, I asked him what the greatest secrets were for all his success. He said, Brother Mike, I don't think anybody's ever asked me that. He said the greatest secret I've ever had about success was sowing a seed for a desired result. Sowing a seed for a desired result. Everything on the earth is a seed or a heart. A seed is anything that blesses somebody. A seed is anything that helps somebody. A conversation is a seed. An endorsement is a seed. Love is a seed. Countenance is a seed. Teaching is a seed. Mentorship is a seed. Time is a seed. Money is a seed. And I asked the Holy Spirit one day, why money was such a big thing to God? And he told me it's because it's all of you. Money is you. Watch me. Stay with me. 
Because it took the Holy Spirit to tell me this. No human ever whispered this to me. I said, Holy Spirit, you own the cattle on a thousand hills. The silver and the gold is yours. So why are you wanting my little tithe for? And the Lord whispered. He said, it took everything you know all of your knowledge to get some money in your hand. So when you bring me an offering, you're giving me the best of all your knowledge has ever produced. I pondered on that, of course. He says, it takes all the hours of your life, 168 hours a week, just to get some money. It took all your time to get some money. So when you bring an offering to me, You've given me the highest level of your time on the earth. He said it takes everybody you know, every relationship. It takes all your relationship circles to get some money. So when you bring your offering to me, you're bringing me the best of all your friendships. He said it takes all your energy, all your health to generate money. So when you bring me an offering, you're giving me the best of your health. Holy Spirit's brilliant. There's not a stupid bone in him. Most shocking thing about the Holy Spirit is his ability to remain in our presence unagitated. I'm stunned by that. I'm stunned that the greatest brain of the universe is at ease with my stupidity, my ignorance, and is willing to take the time to nurture me and talk to me. Calm. Tomorrow's Holy Spirit Day, July 13th, 94, I fell in love with him as a person. I'd experienced him, you know, the tongues and all of that when I was 10, etc. But I didn't fall in love with him until Wednesday morning at 7 o'clock. And he changed my world, changed my life. You mind if I talk to you a little bit about him? He is to us what Jesus was to the 12 disciples. He is the Jesus in us, not the Jesus in the earth. He's the Jesus in us. He walks on your right side. Marilyn Hickey, one of the brightest minds on earth. I told Marilyn one day, we travel some, because I preached a lot for her. I said, Marilyn, I keep seeing the Holy Spirit on my right side. I see his countenance. She said, that's what the word comforter means, one who walks on your right side, taking you by the arm where you should go. See, I thought the Holy Spirit was like a cloud of power, like an invisible, like a chunk of power inside you. <laughs> That's what I thought. Let me stop again. It's five minutes after six. Susan Martin. Dr. Brown, Apostle Anna, Tina. Yay, Valerie. Valerie, it's worth watching. Valerie, this is worth watching the re-air. It's worth watching. It's worth watching. Strong, unique words. It's my school of ministry. And today is tomorrow's Holy Spirit Day a precious man of God that I love, I ask him as a son, would he come and join me tomorrow? He'll be here. Prophet Joshua Holmes. A thousand people want your money. Less than five will want your influence. A thousand people will want to be in your will. Less than 12 will crave your favor. 
This is for preachers. Preachers. A hundred people will want your endorsement. Twenty or thirty will want a job. But there's going to be an Elisha who craves your favor and will pay any price for the favor. That's how you know people's value. How do you know someone's value to your personal life? by the price they're willing to pay to obtain your favor. Thank you, Father. You're our God. We love you. You are my God. My holy God. And I'm so thankful I'm so thankful You are my love My king You're my whole world My everything You are my God And I'm so thankful Five books for $20. Hardback, 250 The Wisdom Library of Mike Murdoch, Volume 8. Contains two books, The Uncommon Dream, The Uncommon Achiever. Any five of these books for $20. I'll pay the shipping and handling. Book 274. Book 274. Book 199. The Wisdom Library of Mike Murdoch, Volume 4. Contains two books. The Leadership Secrets of Jesus, 58. Secrets in the Life of Jesus. And the Jesus Book, 52 chapters on the 52 parts of the life of Jesus. It's book 199. Book 199. The Wisdom Library of Mike Murdoch, Volume 4. The Wisdom Library of Mike Murdoch, Volume 3. Hardback. Book 188. Contains two books. The Holy Spirit Handbook. That's the book used as the manual in the greatest church on the earth, Dr. Paul Young Cho, So Korea. One of the board members, a friend of mine, came out. They have a million in their church. He came out and said, are you aware that they're using the Holy Spirit handbook as their textbook for their church? I didn't know that. It's book 188. The Holy Spirit Handbook and the God Book. 127 questions people have asked me about God. And I answered them. What's his favorite color? Blue, of course. He said it. These three books, any five, any combination of five, for just $20. And to 7 o'clock tonight, you can dial these two tone, phone numbers, 817-759-BOOK. Or 844, 789 seed. Eight hours a day, seven days a week. My prayer pastors, my prayer team answer the phones here. Seven days a week, every hour of the day, eight hours a day. These are the two telephone numbers. Call. If you want to write me a personal letter, P.O. Box. 1669, Colleyville, Texas. P.O. Box 1669, Colleyville, Texas. If you're emailing me, Dr. Mike at thewisdomcenter.tv. Thank you for being a part of the Wisdom Church online.
The Wisdom Church online is part of the wisdomcenter.tv. Many of you, let me share with you a remarkable experience today. I received a phone call. Give me one moment for my chick, chick filet iced tea. By the way, there's somebody here very discouraged financially. There's somebody here very disillusioned and discouraged financially. You've tithed, you've sowed seed, and there's not a lazy bone in you. But the prosperity isn't happening to you. Can I sow a book into your life? If you'll promise to read this book within 30 days, I'll send it to you. But only if you make a promise. It's the book Benny Hinn requested for me to write for his ministry and his partners. It's book 82, 31 Reasons People Do Not Receive Their Financial Harvest. No book like it in the world. It's book 82. It is 240 pages, 31 chapters, 31 reasons people do not receive their financial harvest. There is somebody, there is somebody here who's very disillusioned about the money life. There's something stirring me up about that right now. This is free. Let me send it to you as a gift to celebrate your next season. It's my gift. But you got to make a promise that you'll read it in the next 30 days. Okay. There's something happening right now in the spirit world. Thank you, Zachary. Thank you, Zachary. Thank you, Zachary. Thank you from our I got a phone call that three preachers were at the Wisdom Center to meet with me. One was from South Africa, one was from California, and the other was a lady with six children and a husband a few miles from us. I prayed with each one by phone. The man of God from South Africa sent a very special seed to my life. The other man named Robert told me the story that he said under my ministry when I was five years old in Northridge, California. And I told him the story. He was five years old and I went to preach. And in this church, some of the most famous people in Hollywood, there's a, there's a, there was a movie, there was a TV movie called Wonder Woman. And so Linda, Wonder Woman, and all of her uh, stunt doubles would come to my services there. I was 26. And as I talked to him today, something leaped inside of me. He was five today, he pastors a church in California. But he said, I never forgot you. He's 55 now. He said, I never forgot you. I've thought about you many times. And here he is, 50 years later, at 55, standing in the Wisdom Center, worshiping my God. And he was five when he sat under the anointing. And when he said, you know, the church name, I said, Thomas Fuller. He said, you remember? I said, oh, yes. I preached there many times for Thomas Fuller, Northridge, California, where famous people came. And I thought of this. It's probably, it was the most loving church I'd ever been in my life before or since. And I asked Brother Thomas one day, Thomas Fuller, I asked him, I said, what is the secret of your church. I've been preaching for several years, but your people just love each other. They never want to leave service. 
Nobody would ever leave. They would stand around and hug and love. And I said, what's the, what's the secret of your church? And this is what Brother Thomas Fuller told me. I was 26. Robert was five. He says, we only talk love in our church. We don't talk anything else. He said, when things go wrong, we never talk about it. When people get mad, we don't discuss it. He says, we only talk love in our church. That's all we talk is love. He said, you will never hear me talk about anything else but love in our church. Because that's all we're about is love. I thought about that today. And I thought about how I had forgotten it. I would forgotten. I want to straighten everything up. I want to correct everybody who was wrong. I want to make sure that nobody... But I thought about those words today. Where Thomas Fuller, the number one church of love I've ever been to in 76 years of my life, he says, that's all we talk is love. We don't talk about anything else. Just love. Father... I ask you for a new anointing to come up on my life, my mind, my life, my heart. And I ask you to put that grace that you had on Thomas Fuller in Northridge. I ask you to put that anointing on us today. <laughs> It's all about his love. Nothing else really matters but the holy, holy, precious love of God. In a world of sorrow, in a world of tears, I've discovered the secret. The secret of love. I've discovered the secret of life. Love. I've discovered the secret of life is the holy, holy, precious love of God. I've decided. I've decided to receive the greatest secret on earth is the holy, holy, precious love of God. Not bad song, the secret of love. Amen. Copriazzo. Vandra Baba Bokosaba, Brando Kotaye, Broye, Brian and Nicole, I believe that. I believe that. This book, 31 Reasons, there's somebody who's really gone through a very difficult place financially. Let me send this to you if you'll promise to read it. It's life changing. Benny Hand came to me and says, Mike, Michael's he called me, he says, I have an anointing for healing, but your anointing's for prosperity. I said, nobody has that. Would you mind writing a book for my ministry? I said, sure, and this is the book I wrote. It's electrifying. Book 82. 
there's somebody watching me who's very disillusioned about prosperity. I want you to read this book. It's free. I'll pay for it. All of it. Shipping and handling. This. There's somebody ready to help because of that. Before I close, I want to have a word for my blessing 300. I used to call Millionaire 300, and I called it Millionaire 300. Years ago, I asked the Lord to raise up 300 people under my ministry who would have become millionaires under the teaching for the sake of the gospel. Now, it didn't cross my mind about them supporting my ministry till about three or four years later. Later, I realized, wow, if they became a millionaire under my ministry, maybe they'll support me, but I didn't think about that for several years. But, uh, I want to pray three harvests over the seeds that you're sowing. Everything we have came from God. God guaranteed that wealth and riches would come to our house if we follow his principles. It's 112th Psalm. Now I'm going to ask everybody, everybody watching me for three months, to sow a $112 seed for just three months, 90 days. And I'm going to ask you to document God's reactions to your money world for three months, just three months. I'd like for you to call me and tell me that because there, there's a couple of things I want to send to you. There's a couple of things. Actually, more than two. I'm asking every person watching me for three months so a $112 seed in covenant with the 112th Psalm where God promised wealth and riches for the seed of obedience. You'll know who you are. You'll know who you are. You'll know who you are. I want to send you some gifts. You'll be surprised at my gifts. You'll be blessed. You'll be greatly blessed. I believe there's going to be eight that obey. There's eight. Eight's the number of new beginnings. I wished all of you would, but I believe there'll be eight that'll make a phone call in the next 48 hours. Father, I've stirred to ask eight people to sow a $112 seed for three months into our television and radio ministry, our ministry in Jerusalem every week in Israel. I ask you for eight people to be obedient. I ask you to honor them in 90 days. Honor them in the next 90 days from this 112 seed. They know who they are. Father, I know that's less than $4 a day. That's almost no seed at all. The seed is not the 112. The seed is the obedience to your voice. Amen and amen. There's eight people that I believe will obey. I wished all of you would. If God doesn't give you $112, then don't worry about it. If you can't even faith that $112, don't worry about a harvest. But I'd be concerned. But there's eight people that I believe will obey the Lord in the next 48 hours. There's two telephone numbers on the screen. The seed number is the one I want you to call. 844 844-789-7333. Write those down if you could. I'm going to show you how to sow in Cash App and PayPal one more time if you want to watch this. And I want to say that our television ministry is, uh, is valuable. My teaching in Jerusalem, Israel, every week matters to me. It really does. But there's eight people watching me that will feel the whispers of the Holy Spirit about the $112 seed. It's the 112th chapter of Psalms. That's the, that's the seed that started six and a half weeks later with the territorial anointing of land and houses. I'm asking three people, 
eight people for three months to sow $112 seed in our ministry. Cash App, Zelle, PayPal. PayPal is here. And then 844 789 seed. 7333. If you want to sow through the phone texting, you can. If you want to sow through Discover, Visa, MasterCard, American Express, but your seed has power. Your seed has power, especially when it's obedient seed. MoneyGram, Western Union, Taicha, my son from Japan, thank you for sending your seed to Western Union. I want to tell you, it touched me. It affected me every time you sow. MasterCard, Visa, Discover. There's two telephone numbers there that'll be answered every day of the week. Every day. If for any reason the phone line's busy, we'll get right back with you immediately. 817-759-BOOK, 844-789-C. If you're one of the Ministry 120 that says, Mike, I want to be in the School of Ministry. Don't know what that is, do you? You hear that sound? I wonder if it's in here. Maybe my little. Amen. Thank you, family. With all of my heart. Watch this here. And if the Lord speaks to you, or for some reason today, I felt like there were three or four people that felt a stirring to uh, sow a seed of honor into my personal life. I really felt strong about that. I'm not a poor man. I'm not a poor man. I'm not broke. But I felt strong that the seed of honor would unlock an anointing. I prayed for three ministers today, as I mentioned earlier. And I asked the Lord to put the same financial grace that's on my life. Put it on those three within a hundred, no, it was 90 days. I think it was 90 days God spoke to me. Those that are sowing seeds, if I were you, I would call in my harvest. Father, there's eight harvest. There's eight harvest you've promised us. One is in Isaiah 58. You said our healing would spring forth speedily. The second is you would return anything stolen from us seven times. A third harvest is the hundredfold return. Territorial anointing. You told Peter there would be houses and lands a hundred times whatever seed he sacrificed in Mark 10, 28, 29, and 30. The fourth harvest is three financial relationships within the next 90 days. Father, there's somebody that's sowing a significant seed there's somebody that's sowing a $1,000 seed in the next seven days, and you know who they are. I ask you, Father, for a hundredfold return before December the 31st. There is someone sowing a $1,000 seed, and that $1,000 seed reaches one million homes with the gospel. Honor them. Father, I ask you to double their $1,000 seed back within 21 days. Show off your power. So be it. Amen. We'll run a little video here for you if you want to stay and watch. And I'll be with you tomorrow with Prophet Joshua Holmes tomorrow at 12 o'clock noon right here. The Lord willing. Stay and watch this video. It's worth it. There are seven books for women that I'm giving for every person who plants a $58 seed. One's called 31 Secrets of an Unforgettable Woman. I cried and cried in a restaurant as I was reading the book of Ruth. I called one of my baby sisters and told her, I said, you will not believe what I found out in the book of Ruth. It's book 57. 
Every person who plants a $58 seed to help me on television, my radio ministry in Israel every, every week, who helps me with my staff, every person who helps me with a $58 seed, I'm sending you seven books. It's called Woman Seven. Woman Seven. The Proverbs 31 Woman. It's book 49. That's one of the seven books. The Uncommon Mother, book 132. The Uncommon Wife, book 210. Out of this world, I've spent thousands of hours writing. The book, My Mother and Her Legacy. I had a fabulous mother. Master conversationalist. Genius, really. I did not know until her passing, you know, as you, some of you know that after they die, all of their greatness becomes apparent. But while somebody's in your house, what you keep seeing, you stop seeing. And they sometimes have to die before you put real value. Book 315, My Mother and the Lady. The Uncommon Woman, Book 146. All seven of these books I am sending to you, shipping to you, for a $58 seed. That's here in America. I, I'm not able to do that with all these books all over the world. I wish I could, but I can't. But you can download from my website every one of these books you can download. Amen. Whatever God speaks to you to sow for the next 12 months, I'm going to send you my Wisdom Bible hardback with 160 pages of all my private teaching, my outlines. No book like it in the world. One of my people sold it for $2,000 on eBay. It's my gift hardback called the Wisdom Bible. I want to pray for four people to show monthly into my ministry. You call the number that's on the screen and tell my prayer circle. Brother Mike said he had a special gift for us if we became new monthly partners. Just say, I'm joining the Wisdom 500 and I'm going to be sowing a seed. Tell them whatever God speaks to you. One is $58 a month because that's how many kinds of blessings there are in the Bible. One is 112. That's the financial covenant. The 112th Psalm where God said, if you loved his word and obeyed his laws, wealth and riches would be in your house. There's four new monthly partners. You know who you are. Father, I ask you for four new monthly partners who would like to have a covenant with Wisdom 500. I ask you for 500 people throughout the world who would give themselves to the wisdom of God and honor your word. I have many gifts to send them, but the first gift I want them to have is the Wisdom Bible were 160 pages of my private notes. I'm going to be sowing seeds into them every month. I'm going to be giving the books, outlines, audio. I'm going to be honoring them as they honor you. I pray for the wisdom 500 today that a grace would come upon them. Whatever the seed is to help me spread the gospel. Everything you do for me, do for them. I pray for the 14 harvest in Isaiah, the 58th chapter. Father, there's 14 harvest in the 58th chapter of Isaiah. I ask you in 58 days to fulfill that covenant. In Jesus' name. I ask you for 12 people that within seven days will sow a thousand dollar seed. That's what broke the back of poverty in my world. 
when I sowed my first thousand dollar seed in Charlotte, North Carolina at 12 o'clock on a Wednesday morning. The first time I had ever sowed a thousand, I didn't even have kitchen chairs. I didn't have a table and chairs to sit in, in my house. But you spoke to me to sow a thousand dollar seed. Exactly what Abraham and Abimelech had in their covenant. A thousand pieces of silver. There's 12 watching me right now. And I sanctify their thousand dollar seed that will reach one million homes through television, through radio. Honor that. I ask you to honor that seed within 120 days. In 120 days, let that thousand be doubled back to them in a miraculous flow of financial favor. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm asking God to double your thousand dollar seed in 120 days. Please journal it so you'll have a testimony. Now Jesus promised during our lifetime in Mark 10 that there would be a hundred fold return. I'm just asking God to double the thousand because that's a grace that just came in my spirit. In 120 days, the thousand dollar seed will come back to you twice. And you'll remember when I spoke this. My God, my holy God, and I am thankful. You are my God, my holy God, and I am so thankful. You are my hope, you are my king, you are my shield, my everything. You are my God, you are my God, and I'm so thankful. You are my God, you are my God, and I'm so thankful. You are my God, my only God. And I'm so thankful you are my king, my holy king. You are my shield, my everything. You are my God, you are my God. And I'm so thankful. My holy God, and I'm so thankful. You are my God, my holy God, and I'm so thankful. You are my Lord, you are my King, you are my love, my world, my everything. You are my God, you are my love, and I'm so thankful. You are my hope, you are my hope, and I'm so thankful. You are my hope, 
my only hope. And I'm so thankful you are my God, my holy God, my King, my everything. You are my God, you are my God, and I'm so thankful.